So I wanted to start off by just uh, giving you guys a chance to introduce yourselves really quickly as your like a quick summary of who you are and your background in Overwatch. RLA, why don't we start with you? So uh, my name is uh, RLA75. I uh, started playing Overwatch back in the open beta on PS4. I've been playing PS4 Overwatch ever since. Um, towards like season two or season three, I started getting a lot higher in the ranks, and I uh, started uh, trying to see if I can join a team. And that's back when I found Chit's channel, and that's this is also around the same time that uh, he made his video about how he was looking to start a team, and so that he was actually one of the first people who kind of got me into that sort of scene playing like overguard matches and whatnot and then ever since then I've been really trying to play in the uh, competitive scene on Overwatch uh, on PS4 that is playing a lot of different leagues. I started my own league for a while I've been running that and uh, I'm currently on a team in like that space in like AGL and a couple other community leagues on PS4 right now. I... Nice. Yeah and my... Yeah I remember yeah, you yeah. telling me uh, how'd that match go the other day by the way? Uh, we won. We uh, it was. Re I don't know what the other team was, but I think they were like really out of our league as far as SR wise. Like, like I don't know if they put us against like the worst team that entered that turn that sort of like match or whatever or something. But we kind of destroyed them, and uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. They were, we, the other teams we were playing against seemed a lot more more comp competitive, but that team definitely seemed like right. the weaker of the teams that we played. Yeah. All right. All right, now uh, oh, we got some hip hop in the background, dude. Hey. Oh yeah. Hey, da can, Dad, can you turn that off, please? I'm <laughs> doing a thing. <laughs> Seriously, I I like give me like 30 minutes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey. Please. All right. <laughs> All right, V Majoris, what would you give us your um, Overwatch background? My Overwatch background. Well, I've been playing since season one. Was the very beginning. Um, I used to be a Reaper main, <laughs> surprisingly, for two seasons, which I enjoyed. I was in Diamond season one and two, um, but that's because I didn't really care back then. I was just playing, you know, casually. And then I switched to a support main in season three, and I got to top five hundred. I've been uh, there ever since. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, you know the Majoris like? had the way I met him. If if anyone uh, watching this remembers. Uh, I was seeking out help with how to carry as a support, and I reached out to some top 500 support players. He's the one that responded, so. and that's how we became friends. <clears throat> yeah, and you know how it is being a support main, trying to carry, and you can't. <laughs> yeah, it's very frustrating. Everyone resorts back to DPS, and then you have a team of six DPS. So yeah, yeah but I enjoy support. Thanks, so. thanks for being there, man. We, we need more players like you. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> no problem. Hey, man. <laughs> and now, uh, Tenacious Sofa. What's up, man? We, we go way far back, too. Probably even a little bit before yes, uh, RLA, or at least around the same time. Yeah. I think I was one, when you asked for the pro team, when, when you tried to make a team, I think I was one of the people you contacted. But I thought you were, like, the fake one, so I didn't. I like didn't think about it. Okay, so here's my <laughs> intro. The intro is I've been playing Overwatch since season one. Um, I kind of I was watching Seagull a lot before then, and then he because he played in the beta, whatever. And then season one, I was a Lucio main, and little known fact, when season one DPS mains just got a lot more SR than the healer mains. Whoa. So. <laughs> Go ahead. So like um. <laughs> this is a vicious dog. A team tested this. There's a six-man team, and they all did ten of their placements together. But like, there's a 500 or well, like, equ equivalent of 500 SR gap between the uh, the DPS player and the support players. So I was a Lucio main in season one. It got me stuck in gold, like low. I think even high silver at one point for a bunch of seasons. And then I grinded, grinded, got to plat, got to diamond, got to masters, and then reached GM eventually. Nice, dude. Nice. So, um, I know I didn't properly introduce this video, but uh, I pulled who I felt uh, some like-minded GM and top 500 players uh, to discuss competitive because there's a few things that 
I've heard them all say that I thought was very interesting and it's kind of like the other side of the pond in terms of opinions and uh, I thought it would be a good idea to at least share them and just to remind everyone these are opinions at the end of the day whether you agree or disagree that's fine you don't have to agree but uh, I certainly agree because I'm not GM and I don't know why no I'm just kidding I know why exactly but um it's my team's fault it's my team's fault <laughs> I'm so, a yeah. GM player just stuck in plat because of bad teammates. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, the first question, in one sentence, how do you sum up the competitive system? Uh, go ahead, Arlie. Uh, it's pretty much a slot machine, essentially. Nice. And uh, you're going, if you're in a proper rank where you do, like, not really belong, but, like, where you kind of, like, start to, like, teeter off and go around 50-50, it's mostly just... It's it's it'll be fifty fifty if you play a lot of matches, but a lot of times it's just completely random bullshit, essentially. <laughs> v Majoris, in one sentence, how do you sum up the competitive system? Oh, uh, if I had to sum it up in one sentence, it would be the phrase "you are where you belong" doesn't apply anymore. Ouch, that's deep, man. <laughs> yeah, you gotta repeat that again. That's that sounded what? that was good. Um, I said the phrase "you are where you belong" doesn't apply anymore. Wow. So, um, with 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 that said, um, at w what point was it true? Um, it stopped being true maybe season four, season five. Stop being true in season wow, season four, six four. at the latest. That's that's deep. That's heavy. Wow. All right, yeah, my and shoulders pretty. tenacious. One sentence. How do you sum up the competitive system? Poor crook. Now I'm joking. <laughs> Um, I, I'd say it's, yeah, it's really, it's super luck based. The first time I got to master, no, first time, yeah, first time I got to masters was complete luck. I just kept on getting good team after good team after good team. And then once I got up there, it was like, I started leveling out. I was like, oh, okay, I can actually play up here. And I always thought I was like, oh, low, low tier diamond. Mm -hmm. So I'd say it's really random and you have to get super lucky. So, you know, uh, the skill gap between... You know, a Masters player and a Diamond player isn't that far off? No. Not, like, I... So this one guy I played with a while back, he was, like, low-tier Diamond, and I was a GM already, and he just was destroying me, and I played McCree, and, like, that's not... He was a Tracer, I'm a McCree, that's not supposed to happen. And I just told him <laughs> that, and I'm like, dude, you do not belong in this rank. And then a week later, he, he messaged me on PS4, I was like, dude, I just hit GM. I'm like, boom. <laughs> Because nice, everything, nice. everything about him was just everything was his aim was crazy, his game sense was crazy. He just was in a low tier diamond. I was so confused. And then he got a good team, climbed up. Now he's in GM. So was then, like, he like, like stuck he's in, Was he stuck in diamond, or he was just on his way up anyways? No, he was hard stuck. He was in. He was. He was like plat diamond his whole career. Wow. And right. he got into GM in one week. The next thing I'm gonna ask is uh, like kind of. We answered it already. Uh, is it easy to climb in solo queue if you have skill? Uh, should I start this, whatever? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, um, RLA start. All right, all right. Uh, pretty much, a, a skill can take you like a certain, a certain like, like I think skill can really like if you're a really good player. Like, so if I started a surf account and I we leveled it up and I started playing competent, like solo queuing and just my own skill could probably take me to around mid diamond ish i'd say um obviously no not every skill is the same on the same level as mine but like your skill can carry to a certain point but once you get to a certain point it's kind of just a rolling a number system cuz you really can't con in solo queue you have the least amount of control over your match in in a way and that you have to rely on five completely random teammates that could be any sorts of players like diamond is such a wide range of skill levels in my opinion that it could be really anybody on your team that um, really would explain and then the, and why then... they uh, implemented the win base system for, for diamond and above. Then, huh? Yeah, and then on top of that, uh, you're not only dealing with the five random players on your team, but you're also dealing with the five random players on the enemy team. And a huge problem on PS4 now too is the amount of Smurfs that are in the game. And I'm I'm also a part of that problem because I find Sorry. playing on Smurf is a lot. <laughs> That's me as well. <laughs> yeah, is a lot more relaxing and more fun to do. Um, because, you know, you get restricted to playing with friends. But right. it is also a huge problem on PS4 because you don't have to pay again for the game. You just make an account, 
and you don't even have to pay for anything. You just go play Overwatch in another account. Yeah. So there is a gigantic abundance of Smurfs on PSN that either are just going to play one thing, don't care, or just are completely outranked people with the players that they're with and also just can like really ruin matches in that way. So You actually brought up a good example. I think uh, I think you have, you guys have a consensus on what he just said about solo queue and skill that up to a certain yeah. point it, it helps and then after that point which is probably around diamond uh it's like it's just such a mixed bag i guess so, i'd say um, one and a half oh go 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 Sorry. no i was gonna i was just gonna talk about the next thing but go ahead uh, no, i was gonna say i think skill if like if you are really good you can if you're really good in your rank you can use skill alone to climb up to one and a half below your ranks so if i'm a gm like you said, you could probably climb up to mid diamond just using straight skill, but then the rest of it you can't at all. Okay, nice. So uh, you actually um you brought up the Smurf problem, and, and that's one of the things I, w I was thinking that I wanted to discuss. Um, I had a Smurf. Well, I have a Smurf, but I I didn't play on it that much. And then for this for this season, uh, I decided to. Well, last season I decided to level it out and then do my placements on it and whatnot. And I, I notice I play on my Smurf a little more and I notice that the feeling of winning is not a priority for me. It's more about playing who I want and, and improving on a certain hero. So if say you are on your main account or anyone's on their main account and they have a quote unquote thrower, are they really throwing or is it this just the same deal where they're possibly a smurf and they're not worried about winning they're just worried about improving on a hero or are they just pure malicious trolls well that's who wants to take problem. this um because yeah. competitive shouldn't be somewhere where you should practice a hero i feel like there should be an unranked mode where you don't really lose because people care so much about their number which is their sr they care so much about a number that they just don't bother they just don't bother taking it seriously on their smurf because they only worry about their main account so sure right. they can practice and competitive on their smurf but that shouldn't be the place where they should practice and quick play isn't a good place to practice arcade isn't a good place to practice so it's not really our fault i mean it kind of is but at the root of the problem is blizzard because they don't have a place where you can practice heroes and they encourage you know you to flex but there's really no place for you to practice that so that's their True. problem. Because you think can't. This is... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> and I think like this is kind of also why like I've started to uh, been hosting a lot more like pickup games and stuff with like higher ranked friends and really a wide range of ranks and my who play who play in the pickup games and like certain ranks that even aren't like super high like people in like the lower I mean even like platinum will play with us and they'll still do really well in a team setting with like coordination and like other good players playing with them. And it's like it's not like these players are like bad players. They're just either playing roles that aren't really have as big of a impact in the game in that sense, whatever. Um, that like are important to the game, very important to the game. But you can't. It's a lot harder to just carry and play those roles and climb with them. So it's just like there's a lot of players that really aren't where they really could be essentially as far as skill is in this game. Okay. Were you gonna add to that, uh, Tenacious? Oh, no, I was going to agree, like, if I, on, back in the day, I was just, like, a soldier main or whatever, and I got, I got good with McCree by playing on a Smurf account, but I got lucky because I was kind of, like, not, I want to say natural, but I picked him up pretty fast, but I wish there was a setting that was not ranked, but you could improve, because quick play, I go in there, I'm with completely different, like, completely mixed up skill ranking, so some games, I'll you feel oh wow i did so well with mccree i guess i'm good now i'm gonna play comp but then it turns out i was playing with people a couple ranks lower than me but if you go into cop and try a new hero and it doesn't work you're like oh i did nothing that game and i did yeah right. i just threw it for myself so uh, in between seasons you know people can access competitive uh and um it's a big mess it's probably worse than quick play honestly so no I'm, one not, tries. I'm not sure if unranked is the answer but Think about this. What if there was an unranked mode with roll queue in it? There's no rank. There's nothing. You can't lose anything. So people can say, oh, I want to practice tanking so they can queue up for it. Yeah. And they basically get a proper comp. There's no rank to be lost or gained. So people, it, it's okay to be locked in these roles because this is where you're going to practice. That's super smart. 
I, I haven't I thought literally about just that. thought like of it right now. Play with, yeah, <laughs> it's like a quick <laughs> play, but with roll select. So even if you are just playing with randoms, you get used to that team synergy. What you're getting used to, oh, two healers, two tanks, or something like that. That's smart. right. Never thought of that. Oh yeah, that, it's that kind of cool. funny. It's kind of funny in a sense that I think like Quick Play's best iteration, as sad as it is to say, was back when there wasn't a competitive mode. Because Didn't Quick Play was the competitive. Everybody was trying right. every game, it felt <laughs> like. Or for the most part, a, little bit, right. a lot of people were. Especially because the Nate game was new, too, and everybody wanted to be really good, too. And right. make good plays and stuff. So, you know, people made team comps in Quick Play and, and communicated with each other in Quick Play and tried in Quick Play. But it, there was l all that stress of, oh, my SR, or, oh, my, I don't want to lose, was out of the picture because it was a Quick Play. It's rough and I think because... like it's go ahead, go ahead. it's hard to return to that. Yeah, I think in a game like Overwatch, it's rough because in order to get people to care, you have to have a good reward system, and it's a it's not like you know a Destiny game or Call of Duty where you get more guns or more armor for something. Like it's all cosmetics, which are nice. People chase that, but they're chasing the loot boxes. They're not necessarily chasing a direct. Like if there was say skins for reaching a certain tracer achievement you know maybe something like that skins that are achievement based versus loot box based but i don't know but yeah there's, there's not much incentive even the gold weapons are not much of an incentive anymore but um yeah. yeah it would be nice if they figured out some kind of reward system like uh achievement based skins maybe now to move on tenacious you mentioned to me a, a while ago and i thought it was so interesting that when you you were you were actually in gold for a while, Low, I I dipped into silver a bunch of times actually. Wow, and now you're GM and you've been GM for a while, and yeah. you told me that when when you were in gold, you noticed that you started to play like one. Can you can you expand on that? Yeah, so I just came fresh off of Battlefront two, and my aim was I thought so I would always do well in those games. I bought Overwatch, I'm like, hey, I should be okay in this one. And my soldier wasn't bad that back then, but I played a lot of Lucio, blah, blah, blah. I got placed in low gold. And then I felt like I was better when I first started versus when I was still stuck in it two seasons later. And it was because my game sense was off. Like, back in gold, people don't play as strategic. So you learn to play around that. So it's like, oh, I don't have to peek this corner as much because no one ever comes up here. Or I don't have to really use Tac Visor because he's not going to do anything with his Dragon Blade. But in the higher ranks, like I, whenever a Genji pops Dragon Blade, I usually attack Visor because it's a hard counter. But in like there's there's a lot of little things that players do in the lower ranks, and if you get used to that, you get stuck because you're like, oh, I I I got accustomed to not doing certain things. And that's it's such a great example because I, when you said that, I immediately responded with, I feel the same way because I've been in plat for so long. Uh, I like to use Fair as an example. Because when I used to play at mid diamond, um, my Farah, I had to play conservatively. I had to use cover a lot because everyone instantly like, oh, we need a soldier, we need a McCree. But in low plat, mid to low plat, doesn't matter if they have a McCree or a soldier, or even a widow. Yeah, they don't hit anything. So I can literally just hover above the enemy for ten minutes <laughs> and just, and just shoot, shoot down. down. On yeah, them. yeah. So I noticed that. And 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 you kind of get this uh, anxiety, like, oh, I just want to kill everything so we can finish this match and just beat them. And you already. get used to it. And you get used to it. And but w once in a while, you're gonna get that player that's either on a Smurf or they're on their way up or something. Or you start climbing. If you start or you, climbing or you and you're start still climbing. playing like that, you're like, oh wait, why am I dying so easily when I'm climbing? I guess I'm not that good. No, he's got accustomed to the worst habits. Right. It's yeah. just yeah. Uh... I was gonna say like I feel like I noticed the same thing like so when I was first learning Widowmaker, I was uh, playing a lot on like some alternate accounts and stuff like just try to get better. And I found that now that I've been playing like with these in these like scrims and with like a team and everything against other players who are actually good at Widowmaker too. Like I used to just play her without any kind of safety in mind. I I challenged every single Widowmaker no matter what because I didn't think any of them would actually be able to beat me in aiming. Like, there was no reason for me to fucking try to, like, give them respect because none of them could show me that they could actually right. play yeah. against me. Um, so I was playing a crappy Widowmaker in the sense that I wasn't doing bad as far as my aiming, but I was doing bad as far as where I was positioning. I was positioning myself way too in the open, way too cocky, 
And so it came back to bite me when I started playing against other really good players. Like, I don't know if you know, guys know the guy named Collision on PSN. No, he got yeah. to number like five or six on, P- on uh, PlayStation Network recently. He's probably one of the top widows on PS4 at the time right now. But I played against nice. him a lot. And he will make you fucking play different. You can't play. You can't give him any sort of opening because oh. he will take advantage of it. You nice. know, and it's like I had to totally change up how I play the widow versus widow matchup. I had to play a lot more cautiously. I had to use the angles. I had to like use my teammates to call out where he was, so I knew what was going on. I had to play a lot more safe and smart in that matchup than what I was doing before in like just competitive play, where I was basically just standing in one spot and just being a sniper turret essentially. Nice. <laughs> Hard scoping that, everyone. That's another great example. Yeah, exactly. That's another great example. So, uh, B Majoris. You had said something. What did I we say? Kinda, we kind of explained that um, a lot of it, especially the higher rank you get, is luck. So I said I have said this to all of you at some point. I said, if it is luck, then how do GMs make Smurfs and then get those to GM too? If it's pure luck, shouldn't they be stuck in plat or gold too? I want to hear you guys' responses, but V Majora said something very interesting. And uh, it, it's 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 a theory, it's an opinion, but I thought it was very interesting. Could you, could you tell people what you told me? Um, well, most people they um, well since on PSN you if you make a new account you have um, you have no history of any games played if you do make a new account. So what people do is they make. They play in quick play and they stack most of the time. Stack or um, they just play DPS because it's easy to get golds on DPS and quick play. And because you have no history of any matches played, the competitive system uses your quick play MMR um, to put you in a rank. So if you do really good in quick play, then you'll get plays pretty high. So it's that's actually how people, facts. That's yeah. how people get to at least um, platinum, diamond, and like you said i mean it's pretty easy to get to at least masters from there yeah in in addition to that he you also mentioned that even as they're doing this they'll duo or triple q with their gm buddies and they basically carry the placement matches right yeah they can do that and they they basically place masters they pretty much skip the entire rank system of of, from silver to gold to platinum choice game has nothing to base it off on so it uses your quick play mmr or anything really like i think they can even use arcade like i think everything has an mmr right i'll give you a, a good example recently i made an all their alt account you've played with me on my other called account the one that's dedicated to trying to play zenyatta jonah yeah yeah <laughs> i played with that um, one too that's you yeah yeah that's me <laughs> <laughs> um and uh like and quick play like, and I'm, I don't play like a bunch, but I kind of I knew generally how to play him, um, pretty well. And but in quick play, I just went in and I was like destroying a bunch of like really little people, or whatever. And my MMR got pretty high, just by playing quick play. And uh, when I did my, play, I finally did my placements. I won nine out of my ten placements on Zen two, which is pretty cool. Um, but I was playing with other good friends too, who were helping me. And uh, so I won nine of my ten. I placed it about three, four, like twenty Jeez, something. And then I won one game, and I was already in the masters, like three, five, twenty-three. Wow! Yeah. And this is back. So back, this is back in still performance based, right? Uh, yeah. Well, this is this. No, this is uh, this is more recently too. That was more recently. And I literally okay. just, I literally just played one match after my placements and hit masters on that account. This is wow. supposed to, like, yeah. So, it's not too hard when you have. Uh, uh, when you like do like have a really good MMR going into it, right? I think another thing that's a part of it is when you're already naturally in GM, it's not going to be that hard for you to climb the ranks from the start. Like, I think if you're if you're already at the top and you have and you place and whatever, even if you place low diamond or even if you place plat, you're gonna like fundamentally you're gonna be a little bit better than everyone else, and so that slight advantage will probably help you get up the ladder. Like. I think of Calvin because Calvin has like 50 accounts and he's probably like he's so top tier that the people in GM are pro- like are low tier for him. So he that's why when he places or Defran or any of the good aim people, whenever they make a new account, their MMR, their new MMR is like, oh, wow, this person got 70 percent accuracy on McCree, 20 percent crit. Wow. Place him high. Or this person got six kills per soldier out. Wow. Place high. 
So they they they're already up there, and so it's easier for them to just climb that ladder. It's like a step stool. It's like, oh, okay, you're Gio. So yeah, they've been in this yeah. environment for so long, playing at that tier that you know they 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 just are naturally good at it. So when they make a Smurf, all the other ranks are not much of a big deal. And if we go back to what uh, Tenacious was talking about, that he was in gold for so long, he started to play like it. It, it kind of makes me think about an SR reset. Now, I know this is very debated, and this is actually the next question. Uh, I know it's very debated, but um, each of you, like, should there be an SR reset? Why or why not? Yes. B Majora says yes. Yeah. I actually, I, th- I agree as well. I feel like right now, some GMs don't deserve GM, and some diamonds don't deserve it. Whoa, V Majoris um, actually said the same thing to me the other day. So Yeah, no. I mean I uh I feel similar similarly. Um I really like think that there's there's a lot of players, especially too, in the higher ranks that are just like think they are so much better than everybody else. Like they they're like the most cocky assholes I think I've ever met on like a game yeah. in a sense like that. And it's like, dude, I've been in a lot of like top hundred players and played up there. Like I know I can play with people up there, um, but I'm still gonna get flamed because my little symbol at the bottom is lower than their little symbol at the bottom. So they're gonna be like, "Well, you need to just fill and play whatever the fuck we want you to play because we're clearly better because of a number." RLA, tell me, um, <laughs> tell me, tell me about that kid you were telling me about that support. The uh, the support that there was a support. Uh, so I I made a, started a league and um, we. Uh, in my league, I helped to create two like other teams, but like not a part of my team. And I helped like I got them like captains and had like held tryouts and stuff for people. And one of my friends who was about uh, two thousand three hundred SR at the time uh, went and tried to play for the league um, and just tried to try for our team, right? And I told the um, I basically told the two captains of the teams that I was trying to create, like, look, like everybody's gonna get a shot. I don't care if like you're just gonna want to like say oh, I don't want this person because they're gold, and that's never going to work out with us. We're clearly way higher than them. Like, I don't, I don't give a shit. Like, everybody's going to get a chance to try out. I don't really care. Like, if you if they, if you determine, like, oh, this guy's just really bad, that's fine. You know, like, it's, it's your own. You're, it, you know, you're the captain of the team. You can make the decisions. But, uh, so my friend tried out. It was, like, 2,300 SR, and he was playing uh, a really, really good Lucio and a really, really good, um, like, Zenyatta and their, like, main support, like, Mercy. And he made he ended up making their team, and this this is the team that had Collision, who is n- now in like the t- it was in like the top ten players, and like the majority <laughs> of their team are four thousand three hundred SR plus. And he was on the um, team, and, and, and he and was on he made the team. on the team, yeah. with this guy, yeah, yes. <laughs> and he's in gold. And their team was the most scary team to play against, and we're playing against one of my friends who's in who was in gold. Wow. Damn. So yes, and as far as the SR reset thing is at this point, like. I really don't give a shit about like my SR or my rank in the comp anymore. I mean, I, I, I I'm gonna say that again. I always try to win. I'm not a thrower. I'm gonna try to win every game, no matter what. I'll flex if I need to. Like I'm not, I'm not the guy who's gonna be like, I don't care about SR. I'm just gonna throw. Uh, I do try, but, I, but in the sense that I don't really care like where my SR is anymore. I just stopped trying to care because it's a lot easier to play ranked and not worry about that than it is to play ranked and be like, oh, I don't want to lose and have to worry about all that. You get so more essentially, enjoyment like, from the pickup yes. games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so essentially, I'm just like, at this point, like, I don't care what they do with comp. Like, they, if they want to do an, S, like an SR reset sounds like a okay idea. That, you know, I'm not opposed to that at all, really. Mm-hmm. I think that comp needs some major changes, and if that's a change that could put us in the right direction, then by all means, go ahead and make it. So that's my personal opinion one of, on it. One of the biggest arguments against uh, an SR reset is the chaos that would ensue when everyone's doing their placements, and even afterwards, because I remember saying Blizzard saying that it, it takes more than 10 placement matches to really figure out where someone belongs, which I, I think is a little bit odd, but fine, let's, let's give them that. So they're worried about the chaos that would ensue because you would have GMs going against silvers. And uh, for me, when I think about it, I'm like, yeah, let them go against <laughs> GMs. Because not only yeah. would you, I mean, how, how could you not get an accurate reading from 10 placement matches if you put them against GMs and see how they do and then put them against plats and see how they do? You know, just a yeah. wide range. Like, give, give them the chance to prove themselves. That's the whole point. That's the original idea of placement matches is to prove where you belong. And yeah, we haven't so had the reset to 
so it was really just the constant like non especially for me i've really increased my game sense which really has helped my overall game just paying attention to ult economy i still have to work on positioning because some of the basic stuff you end up forgetting here and there but like uh, the, the thinking about that stuff really improved my game but i don't get a chance or I, at least i feel like i don't get a chance because hey just put me against a masters maybe not a gm i'm not saying i'm that good but put me against a group of masters and i can keep up with i can go against them and i can keep up with them and that should tell the game i, I should be there you know so i i actually would like yeah. the chaos of that of an sr reset i also think like in general people are bored of rank play like we've been we've been all around the same shit for like the same rank forever now it's like especially on ps4 like you run into the I'm same bored. people like nobody really like yeah, the same so people true. over and over again. Like it's at this point, it's just like what's the, like what's the point of even having seasons if there isn't going to be any server reset? Because like essentially, it's just like hey, let's just break for no reason, get some comp points, and then just for two continue to exactly days. where we left off. Yeah, yeah. it's you have only to continue two to exactly days. where we left off. Yeah, it's like what it's like. Why even reset at that point then? If why even have seasons if it's just going to be the like it's just being basically they're basically just continuations of each other over and over again. I remember it wasn't so that long the same ago. Thing every single time. The, it wasn't that long ago that be. placements actually placed you lower than your season ending uh, rank. Like they would purposely that's put you like a hundred to two hundred SR below wait. the rank you last had after that's placement. That's why they you wait have to earn to, it. Um, put stuff into competitive now. That's why they're waiting with uh, Bridget. Is they want to make each season unique now. I mean, they're a little bit late, but that's why they're seasons now. Yeah. So um, now we move into the last part, which is like, what are some of your ideas for improving competitive? Are like, All right. Or, I'm, I'm just going to go so in. Just... <laughs> oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> do not focus on winning. Focus on improving. When I stop focusing no, no, on winning no, matches... No, no, I mean, how can Blizzard what? improve the competitive oh, experience? Oh, shoot. Okay, wait, I'm, I'm going to give this lecture real fast, though. Give me 10 seconds. All right. Okay, if you want to improve as a player, if you want to improve as a player, don't focus on winning, focus on improving. Like, just say, do watch players. Be like, oh, this guy did this, I'm going to try it, and if it worked out, great. Now you improved. And now keep on doing that. And then eventually, over time, you'll just get better. So don't vote, oh, shoot, I lost the match. Think about, oh... I lost the match, but then I killed that Tracer every time she peeked her head or whatever. So just think of that. And how could Blizzard improve is, I don't know. It's it's a hard problem, and there's so many players already locked into their rank. Like, I've been carried in so many matches, and I've done nothing. Like, I actually did nothing. And anyone could have been in my place, and we still would have won that match. So a lot of people are just, are like, locked in their place, like, GMs are going to stay GMs unless they lose a lot or someone's they're, they're, they're going to stay. So I feel like maybe maybe a full reset could help a lot of people. But or you can just make a new account and try and go with that. Um I have an answer. I, my um, uh, Oh, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um so my my personal opinion on ranked is that just like really like they just need to make some sort of change we're like what nine seasons in now and it feels like it's been the same same like fucking bullshit randomness every single season it's like we they stopped like it seems like they've kind of just forgotten about the whole like competitive play community that's still going and trying to play this mode that is really designed to be frustrating you know it's like why not just like make some sort of changes like even if it even if they aren't going to put like if they're going to keep their same competitive play as it is right now like put in other stuff like put in a role queue competitive queue that's maybe even separate yeah or like if, if you don't want if you know if you don't want to like just roll it out into regular competitive and mess with all that then put it into something else and make it separate but at least put something else there people can try to do that and experience that and maybe it will be a lot better than i think it will be the same with like i've always thought of like having like a team competitive like where you go in with a six stack and it's meant for players who want to play with a six stack against other six stacks it might take i don't know how much longer to find a match but then you could actually have like instead of like a top 100 players you could have a top 100 teams like actual like six stack teams of players that are in the top 500 in that rank like you could have act your own team can get a rank based on how you play together which is i think like what i think the problem with competitive is it's like it's it's designed to be more solo even though overwatch is meant to be a team game team bait yeah <laughs> yeah and it, that's the best way to play overwatch is with a team in my opinion like it's the where i have the most fun and we're a team where everybody's trying and everybody knows their role 
That's where Yo. the game is at its best. So I'm a firm mind. believer that uh, <laughs> any way that we can encourage people to group up and play with their friends means a better Overwatch for everybody. Yeah, it's, no, that's so trippy though. Overwatch is a team-based game, but comp it wants you to go in solo queue. That's crazy. <laughs> Everything about it is designed that way. It's harder to uh, actually like climb with a team in some sense. It's le a little less hard now that they took performance-based stuff. I will say. Like, I played with my team in a six stack up near, like, higher Masters level, and that's how I got GM last season. But, um, like, it's a little easy. It's a little easier now, but at the same time, like, you're just... It's just a lot more risky, whatever, in a sense, than just going in solo, because solo, like, you never know who you're going to get, right? So, like, if you are having a lucky day, then you could just climb 500 SR randomly. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's know, and what then I did. And then feel like you're good. So, it's like... One of the, yeah. One of the things I was... I mentioned it in one of my recent videos was... uh maybe have separate solo queue and group queue and i've had this i had this idea for a while and many others have as well and maybe make the solo queue purely performance based and the group queue win based i haven't really thought of ramifications for that would like the solo queue be exploited or the group queue be more exploited like there's going to be debates on which system is which is better to climb i, I don't know i think um, people would stray away from the solo queue one and which is a good thing, though. Right, that's it's, a good thing. It, the that's people the idea. Would, yeah, they'd stray. Yeah, they'd stray away from the solo queue because, like, oh, Symmetra one tricks are gaining at like ten times the amount of SR I'm getting. But if they play in the group competitive, they're like, oh, I play with this group, and we all get equal, but we're all good. We're all improving together. Yeah, that that was yeah. one idea I had. The other was, um, you know, and this is a fairly new idea. Uh, give groups more SR for each win than solo queuing. Yeah, the only problem that creates is then, like, kind of the issue of, like, sort of boosting. But then, I don't, I don't know. I think if you can play in a group, though, still at a higher level, then you should okay. get the SR. Yeah. It's whatever. You know, but uh, there's there's people who would debate the other way around where be Majora, it's like, oh, well, then you can just carry yeah. people. I know you had some ideas, Majoris. Oh, yeah. Um, I think uh, they need to crack down on um, Smurfs and uh, boosters in particular. Um, and I know I said earlier that Smurfs, that's really, like, their problem, but there's a difference between a Smurf that's trying practicing heroes and a Smurf that explicitly says that, oh, I'm not trying, and I don't care if I win. So there's a big difference between that. But particularly boosters, um, I just find it ironic that uh, boosters, the, the main reason why people who don't belong in the rank that they're in are in there they think they have a right to complain about the state of the game when they're the biggest part of the problem. <laughs> right. Like, and the only reason they're doing that is because they need a source of money, but they're ruining the game for their own benefit. But then they think they have a right to complain about the state of the game. So I just think boosters need to be taken care of, and they need to have harsh punishments because they, that just shouldn't be allowed in the game. Like, people who make a business out of putting people in a rank where they don't belong. They clearly don't belong. Yeah. If you need money, go get a job. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have a job. <laughs> don't ruin other people's experience because it's an easy way to make money. Like, that's kind of pathetic on your part. Um, nice. Yeah, so yeah that's, all true. That's what I have to say. I mean, boosters are really part of the problem, and they have been since season four. So and you can tell when someone's been boosted too. Yeah. Like you'll yeah. you'll see in their rate like they were a. I saw this just the other day. They. We're like a platinum mercy. I'm like, okay, that's respectable. And then next season, like top 500 McCree. I'm like, wow, that is insane. I wonder what I happened can... there. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. I didn't know. I did. I I didn't know you could improve that much on a hero you never played with in one season. And then, and then you think I'm you sure hear. There are plenty of ways for Blizzard to find out if people have been boosting or not. Like they can see how many people have been on a single account. Right. And then, you know, how many times? Like, it should be easy think, for them. It shouldn't be hard. It's also just very hard, or hard for console, though, because they don't really have control over console accounts because it's based through PlayStation. Yeah. Because at least with, with PC, it's run through their own, like, thing. Server. Like, it's run through Blizzard. But on PSN, they still, they're still under the mercy of what of PlayStation and the rights they part, have. Part of me feels they should remove the uh, SR gap limitation. I feel like I got so mad. Part of me feels like want, if a master oh. player wants to team up with his gold buddy, that like he's he's taking he's choosing to take on that risk, and he should be allowed to play with him. 
No, I couldn't even. So you know how before you could play placements with whoever you wanted. I wanted yeah. to play with my friend, and he's in silver. But it's placements, and it's pretty much nothing. You never gain that much from placements. So I'm like, okay, because I can never play with him. I've I've never played with my friend in comp because I've always been too far up, and when I place an account, it's still too far up, and I'm never gonna throw to get down to his rank. But I was like, finally, it's a new season. I can play with you. I go into queue with him and says, your skill gap is too wide. I'm like, but neither of us have played. And it's because yeah. it's taking last season's SR. Wow. Yeah, it's, it won't even let you play even in placements anymore. I, I had that same issue. It's like this fear um, of like, don't let the don't let the low ranks play the high ranks. Uh, it's gonna be chaos. Like, I think people want would rather be challenged than deal with this constant frustration every day. So, um, yeah. Any last uh, ideas of improving competitive? I have one last thing to say, I guess. It's just like, I think Blizzard needs to just, if, if they're too worried about messing up their competitive system that is right now, even though it has all these flaws, then if they're going to, if they're going to, they need to make some sort of changes either onto PTR soon or just have different separate, like I was saying, different separate modes of comp that is for different systems in play. Because uh, doing nothing, you're seeing so many players and content creators and stuff just leave the game now. Right. Well, and it, that, that's I'm, not good for the community. I'm technically on a break from the game right now because of the frustration. <laughs> I'm technically on a break. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's tilting. Like the way the community right now is tilting, and I know like uh, a lot of players who have problems with tilt. Like that is it's a problem. Yeah, <laughs> and I definitely Yo. I definitely can tilt. I can become very toxic as well. And th literally, this is the only aspect of my life where I can, where I behave that way. And I, it is very unhealthy, and I don't like having this relationship with the game. And that's why I'm like, I need to take a break, because this is getting ridiculous. That a little badge is bothering me that much. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, anyone else? I just else? thought of something. Oh, I think it's a little random, but... The way CSGO does it is if the whole team, if your entire team reports you, it'll like suspend you from the match for like a round or something. And I think that pro Blizzard should probably do something like that. Because if someone is throwing, if someone is throwing on the enemy team, not even your team, but everyone knows it. So eight people all report that person at the match. Then that person gets in immediate right after that. It's like, and then it gives you a, a flag that says, oh, eight people in your last match reported you for throwing the game. And then they're like, oh, shoot. And it's immediate. And it's because so many people threw that match. Well, you threw that match for so many people, and they all, like, did it to you. That's what CSGO does. CSGO, wow. if your team and thinks you're not, not trying, they all... No, it's like not. For, like, In CSGO, it's totally fine. Creators. It can be. Yeah, it's for not sure perfect, it can be. But it's not like, perfect, if you see... but it's, it's something. If yeah. you were like to see Aimbot Calvin, and you're in a six stack of trolls, I bet you could all report him, and you'd probably get banned. But... If you're, if it's like less, if if they figure out something like that, where the where it's like, oh, in your last match, the people from your last game all put, sent something in saying that you were you were trolling. You are, you have, this is a warning. If it happens again in the next ten hours, you will get um, suspended. The only thing I worry about is because some heroes in the game, like Torbjorn, people just choose to play him. And even when it's not working, like that's like the only character they know how to play. And I know I'm speaking from like Jeff Kaplan's perspective because that's how he would see it. You know, he doesn't want people yeah. to be reported because they're playing a hero no one likes, and with, which is true. And I agree with that. It's, it's just hard to tell. You know, I think, Sometimes. but that's when the enemy team would come in because your team would feel hurt, like, oh shoot, we got a Torb. But if the enemy team is getting wrecked by this Torb, they're like, oh, I'm not going to report him. He's doing totally fine as Torb. Right. And then he wouldn't get the warning. I don't know. No, I feel there's a, something they can do to make idea, actions though. more. Yeah. All right. So, okay. um, V, it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. You got any last last words, V? I don't know. That's fine. <laughs> no, so the community's garbage. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Toxic. I think. All right. So, uh, if you guys want to, you guys want to plug anything? Arlie, I know you got a few things. Where can people reach? Yeah, you? but they're also. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, but it's it's the the name of it is uh, Woodmo Picker Crazy, which is like two of my alt accounts. I oh, say that again. You broke, you broke up. It's a uh, Woodmo Baker McCreasy. Um, I don't know. I'll I'll send you a. Uh, it's easier to probably link it in like description because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of long and annoying. But okay. link in the description. Uh, and then my, like my, subscribe. Uh, <laughs> 
My, yeah, my Twitch, my Twitch. Uh, hopefully, you can link, if you can link my Twitch too, I I, st I stream a lot. I've been streaming a lot of my uh, scrims and matches with my team. So if you want to come watch like more competitive setting gameplay, uh, come check me out on Twitch, which is like it's my name and stuff. So I'll, I'll, it's better if you just link it in the description. <laughs> All right. Uh, v Majoris, I I'm gonna plug remember too. last time oh. uh, when we talked, uh, you didn't have anything. I was wondering if you had anything today to plug. I still don't. <laughs> okay. Um, but I always look people. I always look for people to play with. So just my PSN. Well, I mean, you can reach yeah. Majoris through uh, our our Discord at Team Reflect, which that's that link is always in the description. So you can see you can talk with V Majoris there. And Tenacious Sofa, where can people reach you? All right, same thing. I have way too many accounts, so. I'm gonna be just accepting invites to everyone, so just accept. So Tenacious Sofa is the name. Just shoot me a friend request, and we'll play whatever. And yeah, there, there we go. Nice. Plug. Yeah, and all these guys are Merch in the, in the bio. Discord. So if you want to talk with any of them, ask them questions, just join the Discord, and you can uh, at them on in the chat. So hey, don't uh, forget to be a maverick. Yeah, so that's it for the video. If you enjoyed, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit, and I approve this message.